With Ryan Shumpert, Brent Hubbs, VolQuest.com. We go a little around the horn as the Tennessee baseball team gets it done. Ryan, in regional play, they advance out. They will host again in the Super Regional. We got a lot to get to in the three games for Tennessee. But my first question to you is just perspective. You've covered this program through some doldrums. You've seen this program build the last few years. What's the weekend been like to cover this team and to see kind of what Lindsey Nelson Stadium has been for the last three days? It's been pretty wild. And, you know, I my first year covering a team was 2019. So Vitello had kind of gotten to go in a little bit by then. So I didn't see the, the dog days of Dave Serrano or, you know, I followed them but wasn't here covering it. But even that first year, you know, SEC series when Tennessee was playing well, you'd get a couple of them that year, maybe Georgia and Ole Miss, you had a couple sellouts, but no, not a raucous environment at all, not filling out up a, a very small stadium. And that's been a big change all year, but this weekend the environment was really, really special and really, really good for all three games. And I, I go back to me and Ben talked about it on the Diamond Balls podcast, uh, the game on Friday night against Wright State. There wasn't a whole lot of juice in the stadium and Tennessee had been pretty non-existent the bats had the two innings going into that ninth inning but by the time that Connor Pavlini stepped into the batter's box to open that inning all of Lindsay Nelson Stadium was on their feet they were cheering they were trying to rally uh, Tennessee and they were great all weekend and uh, Tony Vitello and Will Heflin and Drew Gilbert had a lot of good things to say about him and Tony Vitello mentioned he wants to, to add more seats for next weekend more I guess the permanent seating that they had down the left field line he says there's some holes in the stadium we can fit more and get more people in here and I think uh it's pretty crazy to see, to answer your question, pretty crazy to see where this program's coming for years. And I think there's more to come for it as well. All right, let's talk about this weekend on the field from, from the diamond perspective and, and the play perspective. Friday night, you mentioned, I mean, Tennessee wasn't at their best. I don't know if they were tight, but Chad Dallas wasn't his best. The bats weren't great. They gave up the, the, the home runs uh, seemingly after home run. Uh, but yet this team does what they do and they found a way. And it was like once they found a way, felt like they were in control the, the, the rest of the weekend. What is it about this team that has the ability to do that, that the way they have, whether they're bouncing back from a loss or, or the way they, they sort of take off um, after maybe not playing their best the, the way that they did this weekend? That's a good question. And I think it's just the determination and grit we've seen all year, but Tony Vitello had two interesting answers to questions tonight, kind of involving that. The first one, he was asked about where he's seen this team grow the most from 2019 when they made the regional. And he talked about the mentality of knowing, like, kind of the dirt dirt dog mentality of we get in these close games, we're going to win. We can win all this. And then on a more macro level, he talked about when he got here, the biggest change he had was he said the players didn't feel like they belonged in the SEC. And there was no reason for that. And he just – was able to put this belief in kind of his mindset, his go out and work every single day. Don't get too far ahead of yourself, control what you can control, but believe no matter the circumstances, you can get the job done. And I, that's the, that's the persona Tennessee's taken on. And I mean, Friday night, it was, it looked very, very dire. Their chances is like I said a minute ago, they didn't look great in those, those innings leading in, but once they got the win, I said it in my preview or maybe in the podcast with Ben going into the weekend, as hard as Tennessee's regional was, if you could get past Wright State, Tennessee was sitting in a really, really good spot, and I'd have been really, really surprised if they didn't win. And from there, against Liberty in two games, they really controlled both games and, and came out with a three-game regional win. And to do that, you got to stay in the winner's bracket. Tennessee, it, it went from a from a pitching standpoint, it went pretty perfect in terms of, of what they had to use. There, there was not put in any real um, bad spots. Dallas might not have been his best on, on in the opener on Friday, but uh, Tidwell, again, was really good. Um, they got a great performance out of Heflin tonight, and, and then Sean Hundley, again, got him out of the one jam they were in and, and slammed the door. I mean, if you're Frank Anderson and you went into that weekend and said, okay, what are we going to do? What do we need? And he says, all right, we're going to throw five guys, and that's how we're going to get through a region. Uh, you can't draw it up any better than what they did. No doubt. And we talked about it on here, and I've written about it a lot all year. That when you get to the SEC tournament regional, you need more bullpen pitching than Tennessee has shown. But when you get in the winner's bracket, you take care of business. Tennessee didn't need that. And, you know, it was even more dicey because Kirby Cannell, who's – been shaky the past few weeks looked really bad in Saturday's game against Liberty and you envision Camden Sewell being the fourth starter if it got to Monday so it was even a less you know less guys in the bullpen that they were rolling with and they had to rely on but Sean Hunley after you mentioned it 
was not very good on Friday night, gave up the big free run home run, gave up four earned runs. He was just excellent tonight. And I didn't even think he looked his best, looked his sharpest. The Velo was a little bit down, but man, it was a very Sean Hundley performance because he just gutted through it. You know, I thought seventh inning, it may be done for him. They may go to Redmond Walsh to close it out. Once he got through the eighth, I knew they were going to keep him in, but it was a, a gutsy performance. And like I said, he had the one big jam and he got some favorable calls to help get him out of it, but he got out of it and he really didn't let Liberty make it too interesting after that. And then I guess finally kind of wrapping up the weekend of play, Tennessee from the, from the at bats or from the hitting perspective, it was all about the long ball. I mean, they, they really lived the whole weekend on, on hitting home runs, which is something we talked about early in the year. Where were those home runs? I mean, this weekend, they look more like the team last year to start the COVID season in terms of, you know, score, you know, the innings of scoring centered around, a, centered around the home run. It was really that way all three games, if you look at it. Yeah, it was. And you kind of knew that potential was there all year. That's what you heard about in the preseason is how good the power is, even despite losing Alex Solari and Zach Daniels. But it was non-existent for a lot of the year. It showed itself. Uh, the last six weeks and once you saw that once you got to the postseason you felt like you knew there was a chance that that's how it went this ballpark plays very small once it gets into June and it going into the day at least there was less homers today going into the day it had by far the most home runs of the whole regional but I mean you look at who Tennessee got home multi home runs from Liam Spence had three home runs entering the weekend he gets two Drew Gilbert hadn't hit a home run since March 28th and he hits three, including two massive ones, obviously to walk off on Friday night, but you can't o overlook just how big his home run today was too, because Tennessee really didn't have a whole lot of offense and that those two runs proved to be the difference. So you have him going, Luke Lipsius stays really hot. And, you know, even though Tennessee was solid at the plate this weekend, not everybody was great. Jordan Beck had a pretty forgettable weekend. Connor Pavoloni wasn't his best. Jake Rucker wasn't his best. Max Ferguson was solid, but also wasn't as good as he's been a lot this year. So it, it shows how lethal this Tennessee lineup is that they were able to hit that many home runs with some guys that haven't done it a lot, with some guys that who have done it a lot, not really giving Tennessee a And so we'll see. Tennessee waits to learn who they will play in the Super Regional. It could be um, a familiar foe in LSU, or it could be Oregon. We'll wait and see how that sets up as we close it out here. Ryan, last question to you. Is Tennessee better suited for the Super Regional than regional play? Now, I know everything went perfect for Tennessee this weekend in terms of staying in the winner's bracket, but do you think it's easier to win a Super Regional because you're playing a best of three against somebody you're playing every day as opposed to uh, the unknowns of, of, of a regular regional bracket? I definitely think that. I thought that all year, but especially once Tennessee was able to climb up and get all the way to the third national seed and you avoid not the dog on Oregon or LSU, but you avoid the top notch, you know, top 16 team in the super regional. I think that makes it especially true, but you should look at it. Tennessee starting pitching has been, if not the strength of the team all year, it's been the rock of the team. It's been what Tennessee can rely on. And you go into a three game series, knowing you have three starting pitchers who are really good. Redmond Walsh is pitching well. We saw today what Sean Hundley can do. We've known what he's going to do. And then you throw in the fact that you don't have to deal with Camden Sewell kind of in the we can throw him, but we need him as the fourth starter if that comes. You can go all out on Camden Sewell. And I think right now he's been the past few weeks, he's been Tennessee's best relief pitcher. He's been the most dominant guy when he's out there. I think when you partner the three starting pitchers who have been really consistent for most of the season, Tidwell was a little shaky there in the middle, but really consistent the last month with a bullpen that once you take out the depth aspect is really, really strong. I think it sets up really well for Tennessee to to get a win next week and go to Hoover, or excuse me, go to Omaha for the first time since 2005. We'll see what happens with Tennessee. We know this, the entire big orange nation is captivated by Tony Vitello's baseball team. Uh, what a great scene at Lindsey Nelson stadium this weekend as Tennessee advances to the regional prepares themselves for the super regional, which they will host. And we'll see if Tony Vitello can find a way to squeeze a few more orange clad fans into some seats somehow, some way at Lindsey Nelson stadium next weekend. That's going to do it for this edition of around the horn for Ryan Shepard. I'm Brent hubs, volquest.com.